What is high blood pressure? Just so people know. Because the I, amount of people I talk to that don't know what their blood pressure should even be. Yeah, they, they've just changed it. But generally speaking, uh, around 140 for the top number, which is your systolic. Do you, know, do you want me to explain what the difference between the well, two I, numbers is? I know, is? but... Systolic I, I, is when it contracts and the blood goes out. And and all right, so if you, you, you've got a heart and the heart contracts and there's a valve there. Now, when the heart contracts, it pushes all the blood into the body. Now, if all those blood vessels in the body were solid structures, your blood pressure would go through the roof really quickly. And then as soon as the heart relaxes, it would plumb it back down again. It's not how it's designed. All the blood vessels in the body, they're like balloons. They've all got some compliance, some elasticity in them. So when the heart contracts, it pushes the blood out into the uh, circulatory system. That stretches a little bit. Then a valve closes which stops all that blood going back into the heart called the aortic valve. Yeah. And then it's the elastic recoil of the blood vessels that maintain your blood pressure. As a result, you're going to have a top number, which is the, the peak when the heart's contracting. That's called your systolic blood pressure. And then when it drops down after the valve's closed, it'll come down to not zero. It'll come down to a healthy person, let's say 80 millimeters of mercury. And that's your diastolic number. Now, you want both of these numbers to be low. You want, so you want them to be at 120 and 80? Is that Well, like... 120, 80 is your, your gold standard yeah, textbook, healthy person. Ideally, less than 140 over 85 or 90, you know, ideally and, and 85. Over, that, over 140 is hypertension, yeah? Yeah. If you're over those, it's difficult to diagnose because if you go to your GP, you get a bit worked up, you're in the way, you know, you've already waited several weeks to get to go and see your GP. Then you've, then you've um, got yourself all stressed because you couldn't get parked. You've had an argument with the receptionist. You've made it into the GP. They check your blood pressure and it's sky high. Well, of course it's sky high. So, you know, what do you do with that? Do you reassure the patient, say, well, you know, you've had a horrible trip in. Let's see you again in three months' time. Or do you recheck it again in 10 minutes' time? But you've got 10 minutes in your consultation. So, you know, what do you do? Do you tell the patient to go and buy a blood pressure of measuring a device from a pharmacy and check it themselves at home i'd definitely advise that <laughs> yeah yeah but risking the patient becoming obsessive about their blood pressure and writing it down 10 or 15 times a day and worrying if a blood pressure goes over 150 so there's you know there's pros and cons of all of these different approaches yeah i think um with with the blood pressure i had someone speak to me really weirdly today just come up to me and said oh do you um is my do you think this is this is wrong with my blood pressure he says 164 over 96 i think it was and he was like, and I was like, go and see a doctor. <laughs> and I was like, I know he's going through like a bit of a hard time with his, uh, he had, he's, I think he's going through a bit of a separation and he's in, he's really stressed and stuff like that. But I was like, just go and see a doctor. He's like, J is that high? I was like, yeah, it's definitely high, mate. Like that's, you know. I mean, that is high and that is the right advice. He's only 39. <laughs> and, you know, I was like, just go and see a doctor. Like just make an appointment, go and see him. Like don't, don't wait. Because if you wait and that carries on for however long, you probably know more than most, but yeah. You know, how long, if he was at that sort of level, how long does it take for damage to happen? Yeah, but it's, it's good that he was aware of that because this is the issue with blood pressure, isn't it? On its own, it's not symptomatic. So people just have no awareness that their blood pressure is high. I don't know why he took it. I, I forgot to ask him actually why he took it. Because yeah, that's true. Because a lot of people, I do it a lot with my clients. So with my clients, if they're, if they're, especially with men and they're over 40, they're a bit overweight, mm. they're, you know, they're not, they're not the healthiest when they first come to me. I always make sure like, blood pressure you know sometimes i get them to get their do their bloods and mm -hmm. other things like that but i always make sure that their blood pressure is fairly okay mm -hmm. and then if it's not i'll say go and see a gp yeah because i know well yeah how, how serious it can be if, if that goes untreated for long yeah i mean if it's somewhere in the region of 160 over 100 you don't want to be doing any exercise do you really so no yeah